Hi, Washington football fans. Welcome back to this channel. And today we're talking about more roster cuts that the Washington football team has made and will have to make to get down to that 80 man roster limit by the 4 p.m. deadline, I believe, by this afternoon. So um, stick with me. I'll let you know a little bit of that as well as some other analysis and other news from the Washington football team. So as of today, the Washington football team has released some more players, and here are the players that the Washington football team has released. They have released cornerback Jordan Brown, tight end Rick Leonard, linebacker Justin Phillips, and defensive tackle Justice Reed. And this came after yesterday, of course, Stephen Sims Jr. We heard about his release from the Washington football team, and then Last week, we heard about Kelvin Harmon getting released as well. So certainly there are some tough decisions, some tough roster cuts that are being made to try to get this team down to the best 53-man roster that we can possibly have come week one of the regular season. Now, of course, some of the positions that are probably a little bit more solidified for us, quarterback position, of course, it's going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick being QB1. Behind him, I believe you're going to have Taylor Heineke at QB2, and then Cal Allen will probably wind up being the third active quarterback on the roster. I don't think we're going to have Steven Montez as being active. He's probably going to be back to the practice squad or released outright. I'm not I'm not really sure what's going to happen with him, but just a little bit of uh, that I've seen from Steven Montez. He just still seems kind of raw. Don't think he's quite ready to be an NFL quarterback. Um, just feel like he needs to get his timing down. But then again, you know, if he plays behind maybe the first and second string offensive line, who knows, he may look a lot better. I know that he was probably playing against or behind the, the third and fourth string offensive lines, and of course that's going to make any quarterback struggle. But um, I just feel like that from what I've seen in the game against the Patriots, Montez is probably at least another year away from being able to actually make an active 53-man roster. Now, of course, when it comes to the running backs, you know, we have Antonio Gibson, um, we have J.D. McKissick, we have Barber, but we also have this new guy, this undrafted rookie free agent, Jarrett Patterson. I mean, this guy has been more than taking advantage of his opportunities in the preseason. I mean, he had an outstanding outing against the Cincinnati Bengals going for over, what was it, 135 all-purpose yards, um, something like that. And, you know, of course, having a great kickoff return, um, just being able to move the ball on the field, uh, on the ground, I should say, um, you know, being able, being able to just make some passes out of the, the catches out of the backfield. Um, you know, he is an all-purpose type of running back, and these are the guys that Ron Rivera love and will use 100% of the time. And that's why we have somebody like Antonio Gibson. And so being able to have someone like Jarrett Patterson, I believe he's going to make the team. I, I believe, honestly, I think it's a lock at this point, especially if he plays in that final preseason game and he, again, starts playing really well. I don't see how you cut this guy. I think I think he's going to make the team. And then it's going to be a decision with Ron Rivera. Is he going to is he going to keep four active running backs? I mean, possibly. Possibly, who knows. I mean, you know, this guy being able to play special teams as well as being able to be kind of a you know, um, flexible type of of running back and we all know that Ron Rivera loves player flex that is his favorite word to say player flex and sometimes it's hard for me to say that without getting tongue tied but jared patterson man I, a lot of us fans myself included just we have been very impressed over what he can do and so it's going to be interesting to see what shakes out for patterson but i totally expect him to make this team 
And of course, the wide receivers, you know, we've already seen two cuts there with Kelvin Harmon, with Steven Sims, but you still have a pretty crowded um, group there at wide receiver. And so, you know, if I had to guess of who the top four wide receivers would be at this point, of course, it's the top two, Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, those two are givens. And then I would think after that, Diami Brown would be the third guy, then Adam Humphreys would probably be the fourth guy. Now, if we switch over to the defense, obviously the defense, the defensive line is set. Um, linebacker, you know, I feel like we're probably set there with Jamin Davis being the mic, and then you're going to have John Bostic and um, Cole Holcomb, of course. But I do want to see a little bit more out of Jamin Davis. I'm, I don't know if I'm quite ready to feel that he is going to live up to some of the hype. Now, the secondary, I think, is pretty well set. I think we're going to have some really good depth. And Jack Del Rio, of course, he's going to have some really tough decisions in that secondary because, you know, we saw a couple of other players out there um, in the secondary that, you know, like McTyler, I don't think any of us knew who he was. And he just came out of nowhere, played really well against the Bengals. Um, started, I believe, uh, because Ron Rivera wanted to set out uh, William Jackson and uh, Fuller as well. And so those two guys didn't even play. And uh, so having this guy just come out of nowhere and he, he played well the whole time he was in there. Of course, the other guy that we know a little bit more about Benjamin St. Juice, he played really well against the Bengals. I mean, going against the Bengals' top wide receiver pick and was able to basically just keep him in check the whole time. I mean, St. Juice just played absolutely well. I was very impressed. We are seeing depth. Um, I am seeing a little bit of drop-off in talent, of course, on the defensive side when we put those third and fourth stringers in there because I think tackling has not been that great and uh, so you're going to have to really pick out and look at individual performances with that to see of course who who is going to stay as a unit those guys were not very good but we all know that individually you're going to have some guys there that you can uh, of course add to the 53-man roster and be able to rotate in to keep all of your guys fresh and that's very key for that defense. That defense has to stay fresh. Third and final preseason game coming up this Saturday at 6 p.m. It's going to be against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens have been undefeated in the preseason since, what, 2015, I think it, it's been. So Baltimore Ravens, you know, that they're going to be ready for the regular season. Uh, they would love more than anything to keep that undefeated streak alive, but... You know, at the same time, I think the Washington football team really does need a good, solid win. One more win in this preseason game to, you know, carry over and get things ready for the regular season. If anything, if the first string offense does play, they need to punch it in in the end zone. They need to be able to build upon something and say, okay, you know, we can move the ball up and down the field but we can also score points and score points fast and score points easy. And I believe that that's going to be something that, even though that Ron Rivera says it's not very important, believe me, it's, it's important. Um, you, you need to be able to, to have that. I mean, football and any sport, honestly, a lot of times they tell you it can be at least 70 or 80% mental. And mentally, if you know that you're going into the regular season as a starting unit and you have not been able to put up points other than maybe a, a field goal here and there, that's that's not good. You, you want to be able to know that you can punch it in into the end zone. And so um, I, I want to see that to really feel confident. And I think if we see that, assuming that the starters do play some in this last game if we see that at least on the first drive second drive or whatever i think i will feel a whole lot better i'm sure ron rivera will also feel a lot better with that as well that's all i have to say today so you guys take care have a great day i'll see you in the next one